The hardest part of starting any project is starting. I've been drawing up two niches uh, that we have in the master bedroom on either side of the fireplace and we want to build in two dressers in the bedroom. Uh, and then we're going to do wainscoting on the walls. So we're doing like a complete revision, but this is the first step. Like any project, you know, the hardest part is getting going. And that's running to the store, picking up the lumber, getting the lumber back, getting the shop halfway cleaned up, uh, and then you start breaking down the boards. That's the first step we're going to do. I'll show you uh, how we break these down, or how I break them down. Uh, and for anybody that doesn't know, like a 4x8 sheet of plywood, most of them come about a half inch wider than 48 inches. They're like 48 and a half inches. So it gives me the ability to rip it down the center to make it more manageable. And then I can still get two 24 inch pieces from each side and cut it down exactly. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get my uh, saw out and we're going to go ahead and rip these. And then we'll start putting them together. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've cut a piece of wood I had. And... What I want to do is raise this piece off so when I do my cutting, I don't cut the board underneath. So that's step one. So I'm probably building these uh, a little bit unconventionally, but all my drawer slides are going on the sides, so that's going to hold all the weight. So uh, what I'm doing is putting a face frame, kind of skeleton here, and I'll have one here, here, and here. And I've done the whole thing in SketchUp, so I know my drawers have to be a, a nine point something apart. So I just use this uh, drawer height gauge I made to the exact height. And then I can just bring this right down here and I can secure it. I'm going to put some glue on there and then I'll just put this on top of here and do the next one and the next one. And then once I have all these carcasses built, there's going to be two side by side and they're going to be connected. And then I'm going to do a, a regular popular face frame around the edge to clean everything up and add the drawers and then put the top on. So the strength is going to be there. I mean, this is going nowhere. It's going to be in a bedroom. Like I say, all the, all the downward forces are coming on these two sheets of plywood. So everything else is just more or less decorative as opposed to structural. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put my first one in here on this side put a little glue on each side and then that's just going to go in here get that down tight get it exactly level with both sides and then what i do is i just put to get some additional tension on there I kind of just put a little bit of clamping force and that way I can get this flush and a little bit of a little bit of extra time right here to make sure that's perfect. You know, sometimes I used to have it, it'd be a little bit proud here and there. Well, trust me, in the end, it takes only a few extra seconds to make that thing so dead on, and it saves you a lot of grief later on. 
So I've got the clamp holding it. clamp down on it right now. Pop out this. Then I come up here, put it in here. Grab another one. Put some glue on it. Use my God-given glue spreader. Get that down there. And I'm gonna take another clamp, put a little pressure up above it. You want just enough pressure that we can move it. That's perfect. Boy, that one's perfect already. So I got that one in. Okay, bring this one down here, put that on there, pop this out. And I'll show you two of the ones I've already finished. Well, I say sort of finished. Let me go over there. So here's what I was talking about. I'm going to have two side by side. And I just had the uh, face frame. Like I say, there's nothing there really that uh, is supporting any weight or anything. But just to maybe make it a little better, I cut some five inch pieces that I'm going to end up putting there. That'll just give it some more lateral stability and it's overbuilt but hey i bought the sheets of plywood i ain't gonna have them sitting here so I might as well use them okay so we got two down there we got the third one up here and we got one more to build and then they're ready to start putting the drawer slides in so i'm not even sure i'm putting in the drawer guides and it's always been a challenge. I bought these Craig guides, and I'm thinking most guides, you know, you gotta hold it with one hand, but this has the ability to be clamped and very repeatable. So you got this little lip right here, which I'm pushing up against here. So I've got a perfect level 90 degree angle to that. And while I'm just pushing in with my finger, I can clamp it. And then, I mean, I, right now I'm doing 16 drawers. That's why I bought the guides, because normally I would just figure out how to do it. But with 16 drawers, I figured any time I could save would be good. These are the uh, automatic close ones. So now I just set this up here. I go just slightly 
beyond the edge. And I'm not even holding it, which is kind of nice. But I will put my hand on it right there. Get that first screw in. Make sure that it is tight on there. Magnets too good sometimes. So now it's just a matter of, I've got the first two screws in, everything's just perfectly aligned there. I can go ahead and add my other screws. I mean, this just makes it way too simple. And I'm not even sure this is the way Craig says to use this. But for me and what I'm doing, it's perfect. And I've got my drawer guy in with that little bit of hassle. And they have a right hand side and a left hand side. So when I come over to the other side, I'll do the same thing. You'll see this lip. And see, as I press this, I've got that pushed up against there with the other hand. You clamp it, and you're all set to put the next one in. Let me show you from over here. So we're going to go put the other one in. I set this up in here, get that right about where I want it, which is right there. Oh, got to release that. The automatic just, there we go. And now I can get that right where I want it. And I'm ready to screw it. It's truly like getting a whole extra hand there. I'm very pleased with this. Get that screw in. Once I have two screws in, I know I'm good to go. Yeah. Sometimes the magnet's a little too strong. And there we go. Now it's just a matter of adding the rest of the screws. As you can see, I've got six of my drawers done, and I've got a total of eight left to do. It takes a while to get in the rhythm of making the drawers when you haven't done them for a long time. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the process that I finally settled in on. I tried a couple different methods of making the drawers, and I settled on the last one that I'm going to show you. So I'll set that up and show you what I have. Okay, so the setup I'm using, I've got one of these Beasley corners, and I tried the Craig corner things. I think they're junk. I hate to say that, but they just didn't seem to work consistently, and they didn't seem to give me the tightness of the corners that I wanted. And so I went to the Beasley. I bought four of these, found out I really only need one. You're not using them on all four corners, but I'll show you how we go about using them. So I've got my long sides, which is my front, and then I've got my short sides. And what I do is I bring these two together and get them qu quite close. And I sort of tighten this down just to get it a little bit lined up. And now what I'm gonna do on the, I see that, that's the long side, this is the side. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so I'm going to put glue on here. And I 
put this in here in this jig and then I tighten this down and then I can just feel and then with a hammer I can just give it a little tap when it's tightened down there now I've got that perfectly where I need it and I can just go ahead tack the top one in Yep. Boy, don't you love it when you miss the first one? We'll pull that out. By the way, best toy I ever bought about 10 years ago for pulling out nails. It worked so well. Okay, so now we got this where we need it. Perfect. And I've got this set up to where I know exactly where I'm shooting these so they don't come out on any edge. And if we put the angle in there, perfect 90 degree angle. That's what I love about the Bessie here. It really holds that. So now I'm going on to the next piece. And this piece here, we got to put the, another long one. And this one's going to go glues on this edge. So once you have this in rhythm, it all goes pretty fast. Get that tightened down. And that's going to take... That's perfect there. So I know I got the bottom all tight. Come up here for the top. Get that where I need it. Move my finger. And I got that. Okay. So now we're going to go here. Spin this again. And we're going to put the last. So we got the two longs. So this will be the last short piece that's going on the outside. So that's going to go in like this. So I'm going to get glue on both corners. in here. Get those snugged up. Take my hammer. And if you take the time just to make that perfectly flush, you're going to have some really good drawers. Okay. Once you have a rhythm going, these go pretty fast. But boy, when you're first starting and you haven't done one in a short period of time, it doesn't go so quick. And it only takes a few extra taps to get this perfect. Okay. So now, all four corners perfectly square. So now I bring it over here. Kind of like workstation number two. 
I already cut the tops. Like I say, once you've uh, got your measurements done, then you can pre-cut your drawers and everything's going to work just fine. And rather than grooving these out and everything, I didn't want to, being I'm using a half inch, that was going to weaken it up too much. I tried that. And I decided I was just going to do it this way. And this bottom gives a lot of added rigidity to the whole thing. using one and a half inch nail so now we got our drawer carcass made now we need to put on the drawer guides and I'll show you how I'm doing that Okay, so doing the drawer guides doesn't have to be a tough job either. Once you know where they're going on your box, I made a jig, and then all I, and I'm measuring down from the top, and I just put this flush up against there. Got that on there. Clamp it down. Then I take one of my guides I'll make this the front of the box and then I just use a flat stick to get that perfectly flush with the front got that sitting up against the guide so now we put the first screw in that locks that side down perfectly flush and we're gonna lock this side down now I can just put the rest of the four, I put six screws in. Two in the back, two in the middle, and two in the front. Which is more than enough. Okay. Now, I got to do the other side. I'm going to flip this over. But now I've got that guide on there, so I got two boards that I kind of split that. So now this is laying flat again. Bring up my guide again. Put it on there. this side now I just use a flat piece on the front to get that lined up got that lined up put the first screw in That's nice and tight Get the second screw. <coughs> Got all those screws. 
screws in. One more in the back. One more in the side. And one more in the front. Okay, so you've seen me build the drawer. We got the guys in. And now I'll show you how it fits in there and how it works. So you've seen how long it take, took to build that drawer once you have everything cut and you know you got your pieces all right. Now it's just a matter of putting it in. Get that lined up. Yeah. There we go. Perfect drawer. So once you get your sizes and everything done, it's just a matter of cutting the pieces, glue, nail, put the sides on, and it all works pretty slick. So all my drawers are going to be 11 and a quarter inches tall, and on the big dresser, they're going to be 25 and 3 eighths. And on the little dresser, they're going to be 21 and 9 sixteenths. So I broke down my MDF that I'm going to use for the drawer fronts, cut it all into 10, I mean, I'm sorry, 11 and 1 quarter inch uh, strips. And now I, I got my miter saw station set up, got my thing set perfectly, and now I'm cutting my drawer faces for the large one. <laughs> So now I have uh, my eight drawer fronts for the big side. Now I gotta change my block here and I'll cut the small side. Okay, I just finished cutting all my large drawer fronts. Now my small drawer fronts are 21 and 9 sixteenths. Get it over here. 21 and 9 sixteenths. I mean, I'm making these exact, but the reality is when you're doing a whole bunch of drawer fronts, you want them all the same size. So even if you are a bit off, as long as you got all of them the exact same size, you can work with them and they'll still look just fine. Okay.
wanted to show you how we're going to set up our work. I put these uh, pieces of PVC. I uh, made a little routine to drill the hole or cut the hole. And then I pounded these in and they're held in there very tight. I, I made it about two thousandths bigger than this uh, PVC. So now I got a perfect place to register my door fronts. So I come over here and I can snug it up on the bottom and on the top. I'm going to go off this corner and so I should be able to make everything perfect. The way I'm holding this on, just made a little piece of wedge here, got this in here, and then with that wedge, I just give it a couple taps, it tightens it up. I just throw this on this side just to make sure that ain't going to move. And that locks that piece of wood in. It's been very successful. It doesn't move an ounce. And so now we're ready to go ahead and start carving the drawer front. Okay, so we've got our quarter inch down cut bit. When you're doing MDF, you want to use a down cut because it, otherwise it'll just pull the fibers up and it doesn't look well. Whereas this will cut down sharp. And be, uh, being that I'm making these uh, mission style uh, front drawer panels, I want that line to be very clear and concise. So we're going to go over here. the Oneida Supercell and you'll see basically this is going to be basically dust free. I'll turn that on and we start. doing it's ramping in once it gets ramped in then it's cutting with the side and very very efficient
So we just made our shaker door front, and we did this with uh, very little effort. We got the uh, center cut out. We drilled our holes for our poles, and I'm not saying this is pretty well trammed, but that is literally going to take such a light sanding, you know, you don't really even see any lines. So I'm very pleased. So there's shaker door, drawer front one. I've got eight more of these and then eight slightly smaller. So that's how I'm doing my shaker drawers and I think this is going to come out quite well. Okay, you'll have to excuse the appearance. I've been sanding and painting all day and I wanted to show you how I've been preparing the doors. Uh, I had real good luck getting this all sealed up and you know, it's MDF. So I will show you. First thing I do is I got lucky. My sander fits in the little indent there. some of the pads for this so I can get in the corners. smooth right there then I try not to let this hit the bottom but I want to put a just a very slight relief on that doesn't take much And then after I get them all sanded, I prime them. Okay, so we got the middle. Gonna go over that one more time. Okay, I got 220. doing for sanding them after I spray the primer then I come back with uh, 500 grit sandpaper and that just makes it feel like glass and then I shoot it with the uh, enamel okay this is the preparation and how I get the doors from the MDF in the finished product I've got them all sanded I sanded with 220 and then I uh, cleaned them all up did the edging I did spray some uh, lacquer uh, sanding sealer just in the center and that just helps a little bit I, I don't even know if I needed it because on some of them I didn't use it and they seem to work just as fine but uh, first thing I'm going to do is spray the 
uh, back edge, flip them over, and then I'll spray the fronts. And this is with the uh, Zeisner primer, and that's the, their bin primer. Uh, I think it's a shellac-based uh, type of primer. And then once I get the primer on all of these, I'll let that dry for about maybe 40 minutes or so. And then I'll come in and I'll spray the uh, Benjamin Moore paint on this. So let me get my mask on and we'll go ahead and shoot these. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give that a few minutes for the backside to dry, then I'll flip them over. Uh, I'm not painting in the center because that's going to be up against the uh, front of the drawers. So those will be ready to paint again in a few minutes. Okay, so I've got the uh, 500 grit sandpaper here. This is the primer piece and you can feel it's kind of rough. And then I've got this for getting into the corners. That's also the 500. I, I just put it on there and then cut it to shape. So we're just going to go over this. It's all perfectly smooth now. And then even though you see I've gone through uh, almost, you know, back down to the uh, MDF, it's still perfectly smooth there. There is a thin layer there. 
in the edges of quick pressure. ready to go. So only got five more to do and I'll be done with all 16. So all the drawers are built. Now we're going to do the faces on the cabinets. Uh, we're taping up the slides. Yeah, yeah, we should have probably done the painting before we did the slides. But we had to build the drawers and that's just the way it went. And then once we have these taped up, I'm going to spray the front and partial insides with uh, primer. We'll sand that down and then we'll put on the uh, final coat of paint there. And then we got to finish all the drawers that we have. I'm going to sand those down. Haven't figured out if I'm just going to shellac the inside or paint them white as well. So I've got all the drawer faces done. I have them setting in on the bar. It's the only clean place I could find. They're, they're, they all dried outside. So I just got them in here so I'm not getting them all dusty. I have 16 drawers. And I'll tell you what, I got a new respect for MDF. It really turned out very nicely. It took the paint very well. The edges are all fine, so I'm kind of happy where we're going with this. So all we got to do now is get all those drawers painted and we'll have this partially done. Okay, so we were able to make some progress today. We got these things carried upstairs and we got them uh, measured from the wall from both sides. Uh, we got them screwed down to the floor that way they don't tip over. And we got both of them set up and then I'll be doing the sides and the tops here soon. And we got all the drawer faces done. I just need to finish the inside of the drawers. Okay, we got the side pieces up. So today we're going to be doing all our drawer boxes, get those painted. And then we should be able to put those in. And then we'll make a template for cutting out the wood for the tops. 64 sides of glides. That's uh, both the cabinet member and the drawer member. 16 drawers finally done and in and now I got 16 faces of drawers fronts to put on and those are going to be done with an eighth inch reveal between the drawers and the side rails I did all my math and from the bottom of the drawer opening like we got the opening here from the bottom one I knew I had to be down 11 sixteenths so I put in this temporary board, 11 sixteenths below. I checked the level on that to make sure that's 100% level. And then where it needs to come over here, I made sure this was level. And then all I got to do is put this in. I put my spacer in there so I get a perfect 1 8 inch reveal. And so I'll come up and do this same drawer. And it's just a matter of setting it on there, bringing it all the way over to the right. This way, they're all going to line up. They're 
going to line up here and they're going to line up here. So I'll have a perfect eighth inch reveal all the way around. And this is the easiest way I know. <laughs> So there we got that one in, pull that out, get our strip, eighth inch reveal, eighth inch reveal, come up here, put the final one on, slide it over, you do your math ball correct when you're drawing it. So let's pull this one out. So now I have a perfect eight inch, uh, eighth inch reveal on there all the way up and we're looking good. So now I'm going to take this board off and for these I'll put an eighth inch in here and then we'll have a perfectly vertical eighth inch reveal as well. And then I'm going to screw all these from the inside as well. So less than 20 minutes to, to screw all those to the drawers. And perfect 8 inch reveal up and down and in between each one. And you can cover up a lot of sins by doing this method. Because if your drawers are not exactly in the center... You know, you got enough a wiggle room, you can move from side to side probably a good quarter inch so that everything is centered on both sides. So we're getting close to having this one done. We still need the top on there. I got to get the lumber tomorrow. Uh, we're going to probably replace the carpet with hardwood floors, but for now we got it back in place. Got the molding on the back side there. I still got to do the two sides. And then we're going to change the fireplace around so that it matches kind of the design we got going on over here. So I've got my board all glued up and I made a template of the opening because as you know the walls just don't ever seem to be 90 degrees and everything's square and even. So making a template really helps. And I decided to add an extra half inch in from where I set it up there. I had set it at an inch, so I just added another half inch. So now I'll take my track saw and I will cut this uh, where it's flat. And then if, uh, if I have to do a jigsaw, I'll, I'll do that on the rest of it. But this way, when I get up there, it's going to drop, should drop right in and fit perfectly. Okay, this project is coming down to the home stretch. I've got the one side done. I got the cabinets built on the second side. And then this is the glue up on the top for the second piece. Uh, so I'm going to get this sanded down, cut the shape. And what I've done, let me get it. So this is fitting in between the walls, between the fireplace and the wall. So what I've made, just like they do when they're doing a granite countertop, I made myself this little template that once I get this all sanded down, I'll mark it out. I'll use my track saw to cut it. And the first one I did, it fit like a glove. I, I don't think I'll ever do this any other way. I found this wood at the uh, granite place, there's a store we had, and it's like, it is like 40 bucks for, there's probably 20 strips there, but you can cut it with a good heavy pair of scissors, and if you, if you want to really get something very accurate and you want it to fit the first time, uh, there's no better way to go. So I know if I cut it to this shape, it's going to fit. 
If you're somebody just getting started with your woodworking, uh, you'll notice I don't press down on my sander. You got an orbital sander, you need to let the sander do the work. So it'll do the work, you just need to keep it flat on the surface. See how far I got to go over because I knew when I glued this up, this board was bending up, but I, I knew I got it over far enough, so I'm gonna check it out. So I know I don't have to go past this point here, so. So I've sanded this with 40 and I've sanded it with uh, 80. Now I'm going to 150, then I'll go to 180, and then I'll go to 220. to 180. We'll do this one and then we'll go to 220. this laid on here I marked it out with the pencil where I'm gonna cut with the track saw and so you know I've got my perfectly flush front here's where my side cuts are my back cut and then this side cut uh, I did that on the first side and it literally uh, there wasn't no space at all I had to give it a couple taps with the fish just to get it to drop in but it was tight on all three sides because it's captured by three sides. So I'm going to go ahead and get the track saw going and we'll get this cut.
Okay, we're getting ready to make our final cut, the back side. So, for this project, we are now done with the track saw. I like it when I get to this point in the job because then I can start putting tools away again. I got the stain on. Uh, I didn't stain this edge because it's up against the wall. But uh, as soon as that's dry, then I'm going to put a clear coat on there. And let that dry and I'll be ready to go. So I put the first coat on. I'm using Old Masters Master Armor, and I love this stuff. It dries quite quickly. It's water-based, and no odor whatsoever, and it gives a very nice finish. So I put the first coat down, and I'm going over this with a thousand grit sandpaper, and that that'll not. It feels like glass. It just takes off any little irregular uh, items from the spray so that it's perfectly smooth. And I mean, this is, the, this is the only amount of sanding you got to do between coats. And I never used to use tack cloths, and then why, I don't know. But since I've been doing this project, I'm an absolute fan. I love the way this gets everything off and ready for the next coat. Like glass. Okay, so I'm going to go put my mask on and we'll shoot another coat. I'm using this 3M system. It comes with the heads. These are so easy to clean. You don't have the mess and everything. Put that on there. Okay, we're going to go put the final coat on. like that, that should be finished. We'll let that dry. I don't think it's going to need another coat, but we'll check it once it dries. So I just want you to take a look at this. You've seen how long that took. It took less than a minute to spray. And you can just see if I get the right angle here. That's going to level out and that'll be perfect. And once that dries, if everything looks good, we'll be ready to install it. So here we are. We're at the end of our project. Uh, we got everything done with the exception of the uh, baseboard on the side. Uh, you can see that the uh, uh, reveals are quite tight on both sides all the handles line up just perfectly and then on the fireplace we added two more boards of sapele uh, and they're lightly stained uh, they look very very good and they bring the two side cupboards together so it looks kind of cohesive when we do the uh, nightstands they'll also have the same top and then I'm going to be building uh, the uh, bed frame and the backboard for the bed. Uh, that'll be coming up in a different video. And once again, you know, you can see that 
uh, everything kind of flows the way it should. Uh, all the lines match up, all the uh, carving on the drawer faces and the sides, they all fit. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, subscribe and like, it does help us out. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I try not to make it as long as they are, but sometimes some of the people want to see all the little steps. And so that's what I try to do in my videos. Have a good day.